So as you can see, I have some Cone 13 refractory clay. It's intended for making kiln furniture. And I'm gonna use it. Uh, we're gonna start out with doing some test tiles for um, insulation tests, and, but I wanna use it to make a knife forge. Um, so hopefully we're gonna get away with using a ceramic sponge, but we won't know for sure until we do some tests. And then we'll get to assembling the body of a, a ceramic clay uh, mini forge. So I hope you enjoy and uh, let's get to it. The porcelain slip is now firm. So I need to make one more ravioli. I might have to trim this a little bit to get it in. But you see we have the two layer ceramic fiber, one layer ceramic fiber. I went ahead and rolled two more slabs of the same thickness so we can do some uninsulated tests. And then this is just to see uh, of course I'll poke holes and the sponge will burn away, but it'll leave a volume of air inside. I just want to know roughly if there is insulative value with the ceramic fiber after it fires, is this method even close? Uh, can I get most of the way there without having to use a, an expensive material? So that's the plan for this one. This clay was very groggy. Uh, I can't say for sure it was dry or this is just the texture uh, that it has, but uh, really was not a soft and pliable clay. So of course I slipped and scored all the joints, but I had found out in, on previous ones that it helped to take my thumb and kind of dent around the edge because uh, it was not something easily just squished over the top of the sponge. And I really wanted to make sure I kept some volume of air inside each of these test tiles. So I get them all attached and I just take a little bit of water on my finger and try to close up any cracks, um, but it's not perfect. So hopefully when we get to the final product of a knife forge, we can do it with, uh, without it being so unsightly. But that was how I went about making each of these. Our control test where we just have two tiles, obviously nothing Nothing in between. I'm going to put it right over the burner. We're going to put the burner on high. And then I'm going to take temperature measurements every minute for five minutes. So I did this testing in it again. And you can see that the control uh, was substantially hotter than any of the other three insulated tiles. Now the double thick ceramic tile did do better. But for the most part, the ceramic sponge, the homemade sponge, and one layer of ceramic fiber did equally as well. I did continue doing tests inside in the kitchen, and so here's a clip of that. I did want to point out one more thing. I got my thermometer out and was taking a look. This tile is almost 700 degrees. This tile is coming in at 330. This rear tile is coming in at 450 and this one is coming in at about the same 450. So these two rear ones are the same. This one we know the burner is probably smaller but that is a substantial difference. We're just about 700 degrees here versus you know just a little over 450. So that is a big difference. So I'm going to take those results as a success and we're going to move forward making the forge using the sponges and hope for the best. And you can see I'm using a cone 13 refractory clay that's intended for making kiln furniture with. And it is a really groggy dry clay. So it was pretty stiff to cut, uh, but I went ahead and wired it into slabs and ran it through the slab roller and uh, Normally I would take these pieces and just kind of overlap them and press them together with my fingers, maybe flip it over right before I put it through the slab roller and, and press it on both sides with my fingers. In this case, because it was so dry, I did slip and score and spend a little bit more time connecting the pieces. So hopefully the resulting slabs won't have uh, air bubbles or voids in it. So I'm going to use the same method I have in prior videos making larger pots where I wrap a slab around a tube. In this case, this is a concrete forming tube. I believe it's 12 inches. And 
You notice I have a newspaper taped to the outside. That's so that the tube comes out nice and easy. It's important when you put that newspaper on that you don't tape the newspaper to the tube. Uh, just tape it to itself and that really helps get that tube out of there. And it's also worth taking the time to check how it's going to tuck in. Maybe use a needle tool and make a mark where you should score to. And uh, I really take my time to get a good bond and then I'll go ahead and stand it up and continue to work that seam and squeeze the slab as tightly as I can around the form so I can get a nice round circle. After that I go ahead and use just a normal hand building technique to put the whole thing together. You know, before I pull this out and get to the inside, I think I want to try to flip this over and push on that a little bit better. Let's see. Yeah, I should get, Oop. get back in there. So this is the burner that I'm going to be using. Um, I'm using it because I already had it when I built my metal casting foundry. Uh, this is the first burner that I used. I ended up building a bigger one and so this is left over. But it's a real simple uh, Venturi system so you can just adjust this collar to get the flame to work. It does have a spark plug for starting I, I probably won't use that but and yeah you just put propane in the back so I already had this so I took some measurements and then took into account shrink rate and made a template so that I can can make a, a flange that this can bolt to onto the clay foundry so that's the plan so I have a piece of PVC that is the size I need and I've gone ahead and used the template for the burner to cut out a kind of a face plate. So now I want to add the tube and to do that I'm going to trim up this piece right here.
Okay, so I have the major pieces made. And now comes the tricky part, because I need to figure out how to bore a hole through both of these to let this slip in. And I need to get those holes aligned. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to take this sponge, which I will, which I hope is going to raise the piece to the right height. Oof, and it is still soft. Just gonna put them just like that so they're against each other. Now that's a little bit high, but when the sponge is wet with mud, should be able to push it together. Now let's figure out where the hole goes. And I'm thinking, if this is the middle of the kiln, this will be the front. If this is the middle of the forge. I kind of want to be two-thirds of the way up is what I'm thinking. A little closer to the front than the back. And I want it to fit nicely, of course, but I'd rather err on it being a little tight because you can always kind of push it in, but if it's a little loose, it might be hard to seal it up. Okay, there we go. So now that those pieces are prepped, I need to get to cutting up these sponges and soaking them in clay and getting them ready so we can put this whole thing together. So I'm going into just using, I'm going to go ahead and use a B-Mix Cone 5, which is my standard studio clay, and I have plenty of it in uh, barrels, dried, ready for this sort of thing. So just reach in and break some up, and when it comes to adding water, it seemed like a good opportunity to empty the bucket that I keep next to my wheel. So I got rid of all of that, and went ahead and let this soak overnight. And then the following morning I came back and, and gave it a little bit of a blending. And that's about all I did to it. Okay, I've let this slake overnight. And you can see it's still fairly chunky, but it's a nice soupy mix. And this is what I want to saturate the sponges with. Okay, so I have all my sponges ready, and I'm just gonna go ahead and start saturating them, and we'll set them in this bucket for an easy cleanup. I expect, as it was last time, this will be kind of a messy sort of process. So what I'm, what I'm hoping to do is fully saturate the sponge and then squeeze out something like 50%, 50% of what I've gotten in there. I'm going to let these just stiffen up a little bit. 
they'll definitely be soft when we install them, but it would be nice if they could bear a little bit of weight without squishing out too bad. So we'll let these sit here and we'll move on to the next part. So before I go any further with the assembly, I wanted to make a kind of a correction to my design. We're going to have an inner cylinder and an outer cylinder. And then we're going to have, you know, ceramic sponges inside. Problem is, is that if these ceramic sponges deteriorate or crumble, this whole inner tube is really just kind of sprung out in space and supported by these kind of pieces here, which seem like under high loads with putting knives in and out or whatever you're doing, this could crack. So I want to come in here and add some sort of almost like a fin to the edges of the inner chamber. So just in case these sponges break down over time, there's some sort of a rear support to the chamber. And this will be a thermal loss uh, because we are kind of violating our insulation right there, but I think it's worth it and it'll make the whole unit stronger. So that's the next step is to add these little tabs before we start assembling. All right, that looks good. Well, this will be the tricky bit. I'm not sure how it's gonna go. Well, let's just get to it. So first thing I wanna do Get the big centerpiece down in there. And I'm going to take these short pieces and I'm going to put them in first. Mm. It's kind of debating if I should lay them on this side, but we're going to go kind of standing up. I'm trying to think ahead where the fins are going to be because it would be nice to be able to. You know what? I'm going to set this. Put these in sideways here. I'm going to lay them over, squish them in. And I do expect there to be air pockets. I'm fine with that. I mean, that's part of the whole reason I'm using a sponge is to have that air for insulation. So I won't, I don't anticipate having this entirely full. There will be gaps. Okay, there's the floor. Here is the tricky bit. Good, it's just a tiny bit proud, so we should, when we put the, the front piece on here, we should be able to kind of push it down. Better that than to have it too low. But I wanna make sure I have this lined up. And you can see my little side pieces are not reaching all the way. Hmm. Well, you know what? I'm going to pull them out. We're going to add a little bit to it. Because I do want them to touch.
I had measured out how wide these needed to be but you know it's always tricky with clay because it's soft and it moves around and so when you're hand building a lot of times these measurements are just kind of guesses just estimates at best Okay, now I think that looks better. And that should help fill those gaps when we stick it in here. <laughs> of course, I knew it was going to be tight, but this will be this will be interesting. This is where I could use a second pair of hands in the studio. Ooh, come on. There we go. Ooh, that's cringy. You know, it may be the case that it's better to really let these things leather hard, uh, harden up. Downside being it won't, the pieces won't bond to each other as well. Upside being They'll be able to support their own weight without losing your round shape. But I think that's looking okay. Just a little bit. As long as they're touching the walls, that's all I want. Okay, let's get these sponges in here. And I'm gonna leave this part open to the last minute so that we can work around that and then we'll put the kind of keystone in the last sponge in there is my thought. Now it is a tight fit for sure. I hoped it would be in some respect, but I'm also hoping that the that the clay is going to be able to overcome the strength of the sponge once they're all in. So it's feeling pretty tight. It's feeling pretty tight. I mean, look at how much I'm going to have to squeeze that. Hmm, well, yeah, that's pretty rough. Hmm, well, note to self, make your sponges a little skinnier than you think, because I really felt like I'd be able to squish them, but it is just really distorting my clay. But this is why you do experiments, right? Hmm. Uh, it's a little too much for me. Let's see if I can cut this one down off camera here and thin it and get it back in. All right, so I've gotten this one a little more thin. Hopefully that'll take the pressure off. All right, next I want to get this in here. So. Then we'll come back and we'll see what we can do to kind of poke in little bits of sponge elsewhere. Man, just not. <laughs> I think it's going to look weird. It's not going to look as round as I'd hoped. I'm going to pull this sponge too. Just pushing it a little too much. Okay. That's much better. Okay, so I had anticipated this being the the trickiest bit of the whole thing, and I think it will prove to be so. First thing I want to do is see if I can open this hole just a little bit more. Okay. 
And part of what I hope to do here is get this nice and wet so that it'll slip in easier and not pull the walls in crazy, crazy ways. But we'll see. There you go. And into the burn chamber. Okay, I've got it just inside the burn chamber and now I'm just going to use my fingers and I'm not going to be able to show you, but you'll just have to trust me. It's really dented in down here, but you know, now that this is in, I can't exactly get my fingers in. Maybe I can get a paintbrush. Oh, there you go. And I'll see what I can do here to add a little bit of a piece to seal this on. And of course now I can't get my hand underneath to support the back of this. I'm just doing my best with a paintbrush handle to kind of push against my fingers and let me rub this coil in. But the very bottom here is going to be a bit problematic, I suspect. Okay, now let's see if we can get the rest filled up with sponges and start to let this stiffen up before we put the lid on. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to keep trimming all of these down because I just, I really miscalculated how much, how much spring these things are going to have. Okay, now I'm just going to come back and take all the trimmings that I'm trimming off these pieces and do my best to kind of fill in the gaps. Well, I think that's pretty good. I am losing my round here a little bit, which is kind of frustrating. Maybe in hindsight it would be better to have left that form tube in through this process. But it doesn't really matter. It just needs a chamber to get hot, so... Okay, I think that'll do it. Not really worried about the seam. We'll see if that causes trouble. I will come back with like a drill bit and focus, will you? And kind of clean these out. One thing I wanted to point out, this is a really groggy, dry clay and it gets cracks like this. Now this isn't obviously going to open to the firing chamber, but I'm also going to go ahead and glaze the outside of this body. Um, not the top and bottom, but just the sides for some extra strength and uh, that'll do something to help that sort of fatiguing cracking that it's doing but there you go this thing is heavy I got a this is at least as heavy as a 25 pound bag of clay uh, <laughs> so we're looking at a lot of dry time but I'm gonna let this stiffen up and then I'll come back probably tomorrow 
and we'll go ahead and put this on and I want to make a little attachment somewhere for uh, a swinging door that will cover the opening but for now this is good I'm going to throw a bag on it and we're going to let this slowly dry and stiffen so we can continue to work it so it's had a chance to dry for the last couple days and now I want to get the lid on and make a little front door and get this thing set aside for a long thorough drying before we biscuit so you can see I just roll out a slab and I'm trying to make the the holes a little bit smaller uh, or on the outside a little bit bigger than I need because I want to get them stuck down after I slip and score and then come back with a needle tool and kind of trim them to the exact shape because uh, obviously I don't have perfect circles and they're not perfectly concentric So uh, anyways, I get that on and then we need to move to making the front door. So I got that cut out and I went ahead and added a big hole for the pivot and a smaller hole for a maybe a future chain or something uh, just in case I want to attach something to it. Then I went ahead and used little wire inserts. These are Kenthal wire that I just bent into a little loop and want to give a little extra support inside the clay. Uh, and this is going to look kind of funky. I mean it's not going to be a a nice round thing you threw on the wheel and kind of you know just pinching it hand forming it but uh, I work with it and play with it enough I want a little bit of a knob at the top and want to make sure my door will fit over it there we are the last thing I need to do is poke some holes with a needle tool and let this thing dry out this has been sitting here now for three weeks and when I pick it up it is still chunky but on, not even on the bottom, nowhere is it cold anymore, it feels very dry. I've seen no evidence of cracks or anything. So I think this is as good as it's going to get uh, in terms of throwing it into the biskill. So that's the next step and in the next video I'll open the kiln and we'll find out does it explode, does it crack and hopefully it survives and we get to put some fire in it. Alright, that's it.